Amen. Amen. It's going to be reality one day. That's right. One day our faith will end in sight. Amen. Uh, the greatest things is faith, hope, and love. Amen. But love is the greatest because faith and hope will end one day when we get to glory. Amen. Uh, you don't have to hope for something you already have, and you don't have to have faith in something that you can see. Amen. And so thank God we believe in that place called heaven. And one day we'll walk on that street that is pure as gold. Amen. He said it was so pure it was like transparent glass. Amen. Never seen any gold like that, but it's pure gold. Thank God for that. Amen. Good morning. Good to see everybody in the house of the Lord. Our children's church can be dismissed at this time. All of our young people about 4 to 10 years old can go there to the children's church. Amen. Some may stay and be all right. Some may go. Amen. Good to see everyone in the house of the Lord. Great looking congregation this morning. Good to see some visitors with us, some family members of these uh, beautiful babies that's going to be dedicated this morning. Thank you all for coming and supporting them. Uh, make yourself right at home. Amen. Uh, we do want to have this dedication service, but we do want to have liberty also in the house of the Lord to feel free to worship at any time because God is truly worthy. Amen. We have uh, two uh, beautiful babies this morning. We have little Everly J. Lewis and Ella Ray Collins. Amen. They made it a little easy on the preacher this morning with Everly J. and Ella Ray. Amen. And so uh, if I get them mixed up, y'all forgive me, but I'm so glad for these little ones and uh, so glad for their parents that's brought them this morning and have decided to do this dedication. Luke chapter 2 this morning. Luke chapter 2. I want to, I know Christmas time is coming. Amen. And, and, and so we've been praying on this and you say, well, it's not Thanksgiving yet. I know, but I, I was kind of looking at this chapter one more time. Uh, Luke chapter 22 and God showed us something that would be right in order, I believe, for baby dedication. Amen. Someone says, well, what is baby dedication? Maybe you're here and you don't know exactly what it is. Uh, baby dedication is, is it biblical? I, I'm going to say this morning, yes, it's biblical. And I'm going to say uh, we will explain exactly what we're doing this morning. Uh, we're not baptizing any babies this morning. Uh, this is not salvific in any kind of way. Amen. This is not bringing salvation on the little ones. And I know mom and daddy enough to know they know that. And they're coming just to, to dedicate their child unto the Lord. Uh, you can read that when parents would do this in the Old Testament. Uh, you can see it. But we're going to see right here in the New Testament where they dedicated someone in Luke chapter 2. If you're a Bible reader, you probably already know who we're going to talk about. Amen. So Luke chapter 2 and verse 22. Look down at just that verse now, verse number 22. I want to look at it, and it says, And when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished, they brought him, meaning Jesus, to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. A amen. Now this morning we're talking about baby dedication is what we say, but we can also say it's a presentation. Amen. Uh, these parents has come to present their child unto the Lord. Amen. Would y'all agree with that, mom and dad? A amen. That's what we want to do this morning. Uh, Lord, we love you this morning. We thank you, Lord, that you've allowed us to be together in this way. We ask you to help us now, God, as we've come together. Uh, God bless this service. I pray it will speak to our hearts. Uh, uh, Lord, don't help us to get our minds wrapped around this scripture, God. And Lord, let it, let, it, let it be a help to us this morning. And we'll thank you for all that you do. But we pray most of all, God, even in this service, you can woo a heart. You can speak to a spirit. And God, you can save a soul right now. And we pray that you'll have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I like it when we say anything about dedication. Amen. If we're going we're gonna to call it baby dedication, that's fine. Hey, I believe the world could use a little bit more dedication. Amen. I, I'm for that word, uh, dedication. I don't mean dedicated to our jobs. Amen. I mean dedicated to God. Amen. We could use a little bit more of this thing called dedication. So if we're going to have a service like that, amen, let it be a reminder. Uh, don't get tuned out because it's for the uh, uh, baby. 
80s this morning, but, but, but get it, let the Lord speak to you and say we all could be a little bit more dedicated unto God. Amen. St. Augustine would say this. He would say if God is not above all in your life, he's not God at all in your life. That's what St. Augustine would say. Another preacher would say these words. He would say partial dedication is not dedication at all. Partial dedication is not dedication at all. And in, and in our scripture now this morning, we see in Luke 2 and verse 22, that last line there says, to present him to the Lord. Amen. Mary and Joseph come to bring baby Jesus and to present him to the Lord. Let me give us a, a, a definition real quick, a quick like of what pres presentation is. Uh, to present him, according to this word, it means to place beside or near. It means to stand by to help. It means to give once and for all 100%. It means to never take back. That's what that word present means. A amen. A and this morning as we look at that word present, amen, I want us to notice something in just this scripture, uh, Brother Adam, that'll help us this morning on, on uh, uh, presenting the Lord, uh, the baby Jesus unto God. In verse 21, I want us to look right there back up in your scripture and look right there and it says, and eight days were accomplished for the circumcision of the child and his name, look right this now, and his name name was called, uh, look at your Bibles, J-E-S-U-S, -S, amen, all capitals this morning, amen, because the Jesus Christ is the one they would present, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, hey, his name was Jesus, if you're, if you're going to write down the name Jesus, most of the time, Brother Jerry, we want to use all caps. And I'm going to tell you what, if you talk to these parents today, hey, and you was going to write Everly J, it'd be all right with you if we'd write all caps, wouldn't it? Huh? Hey, hey, it'd be all right, wouldn't it? To write all caps because it's their little person. Amen. I want us to notice the person in the presentation. It's their little person. It's your little person. Amen. Hey, it's a baby right now, but it's going to grow up one day, Lord willing, and, and, and he tarries and lets us all live, unless this earth stays spinning around. They're going to grow up and they're going to hold their babies. They're a person, amen. I, and, and let that be a reminder to us today, amen. I know we're all Christians supposed to be here and, and that we believe in this thing called the sanctity of life, but I want to look down here. It was a person, amen. A person. Amen. Hey, hey, little people, I'm glad that uh, 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 we're bringing these little people to church. I'm glad we're presenting them this morning and dedicating them to the Lord. A amen. Hey, we recognize that they're a gift from God. Y'all daddies can amen me now. Come on. I know both of y'all. Come on. Amen. They're a gift from God. And a person who really knows that their child, this person that you're holding, is a gift from God, then if they really know that, they want to give him back. Huh, let that sink in. Huh? Hey, you remember about Hannah? She had that. She, she begged for a man child. And he, she said, if you'll give me a man child, I'll give him back to you. And that's kind of like what you're doing this morning. You're saying, I'm going to give my, this person to you, God. I'm going to recognize it's a gift from you, but I'm going to give him back. I'm going to give her back to you. And we see the person in this story is Jesus. And we see the person that you're holding. It's Everly J and Ella Ray. And you're giving them to the Lord this morning is what you're saying. We see the person in verse 21. Look in verse 22. It says, And when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses, Moses were accomplished. Look at what it says now. If you write in your Bible, why don't you underline that next word? Huh? Because this is a big word. It should be capitalized, I think, especially for this morning. Hey, they. 
they. Amen. First, Brother Brian, we've seen the person of the dedication, and now we see the parents of the dedication. Amen. Hey, can I say something this morning? I, I, I know little uh, El Ray is smart for her age, and she's kind, and she's friendly, but she could not have got here on her own this morning. Amen. Hey, it says they came and brought that child. Amen. And I'm glad for these parents that brought them this morning. They could not come on their own to be dedicated. I'm glad for the parents this morning. And, and really, if you think about it, this service is not about these babies, but it's about these parents this morning. Uh, and I always want to make that clear. Hey, this baby's not dedicating themselves. These parents are dedicating these children to the Lord. It's more about the parents. Amen. Hey, parents' dedication is what this should be called. A parent's dedication. Hey, hey we can't expect our child to be dedicated if the parents aren't dedicated. It's a parent dedication, amen? Proverbs, I, I want to tell, I want to, I want to talk just to the parents just for a little bit because it's going to be short this morning, but if you'll take these three things I'm going to tell you, it will help you in raising up your children, amen? And really listen to it. Moms and dads across the sanctuary, listen to this, and I'm going to use Bible, and there may be times that you may say, well, I don't know about all that. Well, I'm going to read it right out of the Bible to us this morning to help us. Three things I want us to know. Hey, hey look, and Brother Thomas is already he said it this morning. Proverbs 22 and verse number 6. This is point number 1 for parents now. Hey, train up a child in the way he should go. When he is old, he shall not depart. Amen. There's some training that's going to need to be done to these children. It's called training. Amen. Now, now we got to think about this thing. Training. What is training? Training is not uh, you do as I say do, not as I do. That's of the devil. You do what I say. Training, it, it, a drill instructor trains, amen. He don't say you go run five miles. He goes and says, let's run. And he starts running with them. He's training them. He's, he's going on beside them and he's training them. And you've got to train your children. And can I say where training takes place according to the word of God? Hey, you can look at it now. Training is from 1 to 12. 1 to 12 is where we train our children. You say, what, what, what do you mean by training? We tell them what they should think. You going to let Abigail pick what we're going to eat for supper tonight? She probably has some good ideas, though. But I'm sure it'd be lollipops and candy bars. Watching Spongebob. No. We don't, we don't let them make the decisions. We're training them. Come on now. We're telling them what to think. From 1 to 12, you, do, you know what the Catholic Church says? Give me your kids till they're 7 and we'll have them for life. Because training takes place between 1 and 12 years old. And you're telling them what to think. When they, that's how you train them. You tell them what they should think. Hey, it, 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 it takes us. Hey, but when, when, you, when you train them now, I want, to, I, want, I want to encourage our mom and daddies. When you're training, make sure that you're clear in your training. Don't say one thing and then do another thing. Be clear in your training. Look, and I'll go ahead and say it. Training a lot of times takes discipline. Mom and daddies, if you ever threaten to do what you know you need to do, it's called corporal punishment. Then do what you said you was going to do. Amen. Amen. So sometimes, sometimes it gets to the point where I'm going to get you later, but later comes and you're like, eh. Huh? No, 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 no. Make sure you do what you said you're going to do. Be clear with your training. Amen. And then when you do that, amen, be convincing with it. Ah, uh, hey, be convincing with your training. Somebody, some, I can't see, but I see some eyebrows come up like my mom and daddy was convincing when they, when they was training me. Hey, mom was convincing. Be clear with it. Be convincing with it. Now listen, and be compassionate with it. Never whip a child, mamas and daddies to be, in anger. You're not disciplined then, you're teaching anger. You're training anger. Make sure that you have compassion while you're doing it, because remember, you was, you was young one time and done, 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 done stuff, uh, 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 went and, and did what you was told not to do. Be compassionate about it. Hey, we can still whip our children and not, and not abuse our children. 
But you got to train them. That's from 1 to 12. And we tell them what to think. And you can look in that and you see that. Proverbs 22 verse 6 and Deuteronomy 6. Everybody knew I was probably going to go there, didn't you? Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 7. It would say teach them. We want to we wanna, from 1 to 12. You want to train those children. And you're going to tell them what to think. Now from, from, from 12 to 20. You're going to teach them how to think for themselves. Hey, we're going to teach them. Teaching someone is, 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 is helping them to think and make decisions on their own. Huh? How do you do that? Well, a lot of times when Jesus was 12 years old, how did he teach them? He was asking questions. Uh, sometimes when we teach, we, a teacher asks questions. It's kind of like math problems. What's two plus two? And, you, and you're teaching them uh, 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 how to think. A amen. You're teaching them uh, what to think when they're 1 to 12 and 12 to 20. You're teaching them how to think. Jesus did that in Luke chapter 2 verse 46. He was asking questions and he was teaching, hey, how to think. 1 through 12 is uh, you making their decisions for them. And 12 through 20, you're teaching them how to make decisions on their own. And then we see that, that, that they're making decisions, hey, not, not letting them make the bad decisions. Hold on now. I didn't say you let them make bad. You can let them make a bad decision if the consequences are small. But y'all know what I'm saying. You teach them how to think. You teach them what to think. Now you teach them how to think for themselves from 12 to 20 years old. And then the Bible would be clearly would say these. I'll give you these scriptures if you want to write them down. Hey, it says in Exodus 30 and verse 14, Numbers 3, or 1 and verse 3, it says uh, that, you, that we, ought to, we ought to train them and we ought to teach them. But in these verses, you'll see from 20 up that you're just going to have to trust that they'll serve God on their own. I know a lot of mamas and daddies try to be, try to be mamas and daddies right on. And don't get sideways with me. I'm, I'm still a daddy. But from 20 up, According to the Bible, you've got to trust that those first 20 years that you taught them right and you trained them right, and it's going to be their decision to trust. It's going to be, you're going to hope that you've done it right because they're going to trust then. See, you can't make no one trust the Lord. You can't train someone to trust the Lord. You can't teach someone to trust the Lord. They got to trust the Lord. You can do what's right. You can train them in the, in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. But when it comes their time, they're going to have to do the trusting in the Lord. Your job is done. I can show us in the Bible, even Jesus, when he come to that age, uh, you can see there when he was on the cross, he looked down at his mother. Hey, and, it, it, hey, and he, he, he would say over there, Matthew uh, chapter 20 roundabout, he would say, who is my mother and who is my father? And he would say these words, we're more like brothers and sisters when they become 20 years old, they're going to be more like your brothers and sisters if you've trained them and taught them right. Brother Jay, it's your brother up here on the front row. It's, it's biblical now. I, I, I know we're from the south and, uh, we, and grandmamas is in, and, and mamas and dads. I know how we think, but, but spiritually speaking, when they become 20 years old, and I'm just using, hey, you ain't got to really stick with a 20-year-old, okay? But I'm just trying to use Bible uh, 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 years in, in here to help us out to see that when they get to be adults, they're going to have to trust them themselves, and you're going to have to trust that you've done what you could do to help them. Amen? And that's for the parents this morning. We see in Luke 22, Luke 2 and 22, we see the person being dedicated and we see the parents here that's dedicating. And if you go back to Deuteronomy chapter 6, the family chapter, the children's chapter, you go to chapter 4, it says, Hear all ye Israelites, all of Israel, what we see is, in a baby dedication, we see the person being dedicated, and we see the parents that's bringing them to be dedicated, and in Deuteronomy, it would show us the people. It would show us the people. Listen now, I do not believe, 
It takes a village to raise a child. I believe it takes mom and daddy to raise a child. Huh? Well, what's wrong with our world today is people make statements like that and we'll grab a hold to it because it sounds good. But what happens is, well, I want to come to Evergreen. How's your youth program? Because Brother Adam, Mom and Daddy don't want to teach him. They want you to teach him. And don't take a village to raise kids. It takes a mom and daddy dedicated to the Lord. Don't let somebody else raise your children. Raise them yourself. But when you come to this place, there's going to be people here. And people, I want to talk to us just for a minute and I'll be done. Hey, people, people, listen. Hey, here's what he would say. Hey, we're talking about presentation now. We're presenting the babies. Well, mom and daddies is the one presenting the babies. But we also see that the people, Romans 12 and verse 1, write that down and go back and read it. Here's what Paul would say. He said, I beseech you, brethren. I beseech you, brethren. Hey, hey, people, listen to me. I beseech you. That word beseech means to call out you, to plead with you, to beckon with you, to pray for you. It's a military term to call to combat. Hey, not to die, but to live. He says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, present yourself a living sacrifice. But, Larry, we are to present ourselves. To God as the people of God. We ought to present ourselves. Hey, this baby dedication, huh? Mom and daddy's the one that's brought them. Mom and daddy ought to be the one raising them, but we as the people in their life ought to help them out. Yeah. Amen. We ought, to, we ought to teach them right in Sunday school. We ought to train them up and, and we ought to love on them when they come in this place. Make them feel like, hey, just because we, we older don't mean that we can't love on the young ones. It says it's our reasonable service. And that simply means it's the only logical thing to do if you're a child of God, is present yourself to God. And today, church, I will challenge us as these children's uh, church mentors, aunts, uncles, grandmama, granddaddies, uh, Sunday school teachers, deacons, trustees, hey, present yourself in a way to them. Uh, you, you never know what what these youngers is going to grow up and the way they're going to think about us. Because we look back in our lives on those that went before us. And let me tell you something about Uncle Bob. There's one thing I knew about Grandma. Let's present ourselves to them that we could help this mom and daddy always raise these children and teach these children in the fear of the admonition of the Lord. You're doing the right thing this morning. You're doing the right thing. But you've got to train them, and you, then you have to teach them, right. and then you have to trust. Right. I want to say something. Proverbs 22 and verse 6 says this. Train up a child in the way he should go. When he is old, he will not depart. Right. A proverb is a, is a fact, is a, is, a, is a speech of truth. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Plus it's Bible. So that means it's true. It's a proverb, but it's not a promise. But it's good to know if you, if you raise them up and they do what they're supposed to do and they're, they're playing. I, I had a lot of scripture I could have read on this, but it's good. But if they don't, then it's still good to know that you've done what God said do. Train them up and teach them up and trust one day that they'll trust themselves, the Lord. Amen. I'm going to ask them to bring up little Everly J up here. And I'm going to ask them to bring little Ella Ray up here. And I'm going to ask, if we will, the deacons to come up. And I'm going to ask mom and daddy, or grandma and granddaddy, should I say, and all those great grandma and granddads, anyone else who would like to come, and we're going to pray for these. Give them just a minute to come up here, these family members. Come on, deacons. All the deacons, please. <clears throat> then I'm going to ask, as these family members have come around these little babies, I'm going to ask if anyone else who would like to come and gather around. We're going to have prayer for these. You can get up. You can, you can come this morning. 
And we want to pray for these young babies that, that God will bless them in their life in every way. God will bless them physically and spiritually. and Help mom and daddy be what I know they desire to be for God. And I want to say something this morning. This is a testimony that the world ain't winning. God's still got people. Amen. Still raising them right. All who can and will come and let's pray with these. And I'm going to ask Brother Tony if he will to come down and, and we'll pray this morning for these. You pray for Everly J first and then we'll go over here to Ella Ray. Father, we come in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you, Lord, this morning for your grace and your mercy. I uh, what a blessing she is. I thank you for Brother Adam and Sister Harley and they're uh, uh, training them up right, God. They're bringing them, Lord. Have they made a, a, a statement of faith right now this morning, God. Lord, not just to the church, but everyone can see that they have that they are dedicated to bring up this child, Lord God, in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. And we lift them up, God, and pray that you'll bless them in every way, God. Provide all their needs according to your riches and glory. And we'll thank you and we'll praise you for that this morning, God. In Jesus' name. Father, we come in the name of Jesus, O oh God, and we pray, Lord, for our little sister, God, as she comes this morning. I pray that you'll bless her in her life, God. Bless her with uh, her health and uh, uh, bless her with uh, growing, O oh God. And I pray for Brother Brandon and Sister Kimberly, God, that you'll bless them, help them to be, O oh God, the parents I know they desire to be. And I just pray for them. I pray for little Abigail, God, touch her and help her and bless this family in a special way, God, and just touch them, O oh God. I know they've done the right decision. You know, God, and, and brought this morning, God, by faith, oh God, and we pray with them. In Jesus' name, God, we thank you for them. Yes, God, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank these this morning. Amen. If you're going to be dedicated to pray for these families, why don't you let it be known by standing to your feet this morning? Amen. Let's continue, not just today, but let's continue to pray for all these family, beautiful families on both sides. Amen. Pray for them that God will use them in a mighty way. Amen. Right after service, we, ha we do have, uh, 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 it's down there, right? Amen. We, we do have uh, all the paperwork for being dedicated, and I want to ask Mom and Dad just to stay right up here. And if anyone wants to come by and speak to them, we'll give you that opportunity. Just remember the night at 6 o'clock, we do have Jeff Mosteller coming and his family, and they're going to sing, and Jeff's going to preach, and uh, I promise you, you don't want to miss that tonight. That'll be at our 6 p.m. service. Also, remember that homecoming is next week. Amen. And so invite everyone out. We're planning a big time here at the house of the Lord. Uh, there will be no Sunday night service, but Monday night we'll be, we'll be back in the house of the Lord for revival. And we're looking forward to what God's going to do in that. If you look in your bulletin, you see that our revival has a theme. And it comes out of Galatians 5 and verse number 1. And our theme is untangling yokes. Amen. Sometimes Brother Jay was all over in Sunday school. Uh, sometimes we get yoked and we get burdened down with things. And this is what revival is for, to untangle them yokes and to get them off. Read that scripture, Galatians 5 and 1, and let the Lord speak to you. Amen. If no other announcements this morning, amen. Amen. Five o'clock Tuesday, be here. Going to eat and going to revival. Amen. That's all our teens. Sunday after revival. Amen. After revival. Everybody be wanting to sing in the choir. Amen. 430. All right. Any any other announcements? Amen. No other announcements uh, this morning. I, I thank the Lord for these families. We love you both. And, and I'm going to ask these, uh, I'm going to ask you, Brother Adam, I want you to, to dismiss this service. And then Brother Brandon, when he gets finished, to don't say amen. And when he gets finished, I want you to, to dismiss it as well. Amen, you fathers. Brother Adam.